afternoon. Today we are looking at digestive system from part one. So my name is Dr. Adel and we'll be doing a series of digestive system lectures in, over the next few weeks. Thank you. So digestive system. So this acquires nutrients from the environment. It is used to synthesize essential components in a process known as anabolism and is broken down to provide energy to cells in a process known as catabolism. The digestive system comprises of two systems. The digestive tract and accessory organs. Mm. So the digestive tract and the uh, accessory organs. So the digestive tract involves the gastrointestinal tract or alimentary canal and continuous muscular tube that extends from the oral cavity to the anus. And the accessory organs include the teeth, tongue and various glandular organs such as liver and the pancreas. So look at the major organs of the digestive tract. You have the oral cavity, the pharynx, the esophagus, the stomach, small intestine, rectum and the large intestine. So the oral cavity, also known as your mouth, this is involved in ingestion, mechanical digestion of accessory organs, such as teeth and tongue, moisturizing, mixing with slivery secretions. You have the esophagus, which transports materials to the stomach, the small intestine, which is involved in enzymatic digestion, and absorption of water, organic substrates, vitamins and ions. Ectom, which is involved in dehydration and compaction of the ingest and digestible materials in preparation for elimination. The pharynx, the stomach and large intestine, within pharynx is the muscular propulsion of materials into the esophagus. The stomach with chemical digestion materials by acids and enzymes and mechanical digestion through muscular contractions. And the large intestine with dehydration and reabsorption of electrolytes and compaction of indigestible materials in preparation for elimination. The teeth, which is, involved in which is involved in mechanical digestion by chewing in a process known as mastication. The tongue, which is involved in assisting mechanical digestion of teeth sensory analysis. The liver, secretion of bile, which is important for lipid digestion, storage of nutrients, and many other vital functions. Slivery glands, which is secretion of lubricating fluid containing enzymes that break down carbohydrates. The pancreas, which have exocrine cells, which secrete buffers and digestive enzymes. Endocrine cells, which secrete hormones. And the gall bladder, which is the storage and concentration of bile. So the integrated process of digestive system, which involve propulsion, mechanical digestion and propulsion, chemical digestion and secretion. So propulsion is propelling the food along the digestive tract, mechanical digestion and propulsion, which is crushing and shearing the food, chemical digestion and secretion, which involves release of water, acid, enzymes, buffers and salts, by epithelium of digestive tract, granular organs and bowel bladder. Then you have the integrated process of digestive system, such as absorption, which involves the movement of organic molecules, electrolytes, vitamins, minerals, and water across the digestive epithelium into the interstitial fluid or digestive tract. Then you have defecation, which is elimination of waste from the body. Compacted dehydrated wastes are called feces. So one of the processes that occur in the stomach is known as peristalsis. So this is a muscular movement of food through the alimentary canal. So peristaltic waves move down the food from the esophagus to the stomach. So in the stomach, peristalsis churns swallowed food mixing with gastric juices. When food passes from the stomach into the small intestine, peristaltic waves shift it back and forth and mix with digestive enzymes and fluids and then move it along the small intestine when nutrient absorption occurs. Food is then passed to the large intestine where any final absorption takes place. Peristaltic waves help compact and move waste and indigestible foodstuffs through the large intestine for elimination. So the walls of the alimentary canal include layers of smooth muscle controlled by the autonomic nervous system. Alternating contraction and relaxation of these muscles is known as peristalsis, as I said in previous slides. So the circular muscles behind the bolus contract, while circular muscles ahead of the bolus relax. The longitudinal muscles ahead of the bolus contract, and this leads to shortening in the adjacent segments, and wave of contraction in circular muscle layer, and this forces the bolus forward. So the digestive system is mainly regulated through neural and hormonal mechanisms. Local factors also play an important role. The brain controls the responses of hunger and satiety. The endocrine system controls the release of hormones and enzymes required for the digestion of food in, in the digestive tract. So looking at the neural mechanisms, the wall of the digestive tract are embedded with nerves that connect the digestive system to the nervous system and other organs. So you have long reflexes and short reflexes. So the long reflexes connect to the nervous system and work in response to stimuli outside the digestive system 
and the short reflexes connect to other nerves and digestive system to work locally and control short segments of the digestive tract. The walls of the digestive tract contain a variety of receptors that detect different signals, such as mechanoreceptors, chemoreceptors and osmoreceptors. With regards to hormonal mechanisms, a variety of hormones are involved in the digestive process. They are produced in several organs including the stomach, small intestine and pancreas, and this affects almost every aspect of digestion. Some also affect other systems. The hormones travel through the bloodstream and reach the target organs and they work through the nervous system to control digestive processes such as control of appetite, digestion and blood sugar levels. So there is local and direct regulations of the pH, volume or chemical composition of the intestinal contents. For example, stretching the intestinal wall can stimulate localised contractions. Local factors can also release chemicals such as prostaglandins and histamine. So histamine, for as an example, in the stomach stimulates secretion of acid by adjacent cells. So looking at the digestive system histology, you can see on the diagram, there's a wee diagram, nice wee diagram here as well. The major layers of the digestive tract are mucosa, submucosa, muscular layer, and serosa adventitia. So the mucosa is inner lining of the digestive tract. The mucous membrane consisting of epithelium, moistened by glandular secretions, the lamina propria of areolar tissue, and the muscular muscularis mucosae. The epithelium is the mucosal epithelium is simple or stratified, and this depends on the location, function, and stresses. So there's also the oral cav oval cavity, pharynx, esophagus and anal canal and, the and this is where the stratified squamous epithelium is. Then you have a simple column of epithelium, the stomach, small intestine, most of the large intestine. The lamina propria supports the epithelium and contains blood vessels, sensory nerve endings, lymphatic vessels and immune cells. Looking at the muscularis mucosae in most areas of the digestive tract deep to the lamina propria, this is where this occurs. Narrow sheet of, is this a narrow sheet of smooth muscle and elastic fibres? Smooth muscle cells are arranged in two concentric layers. The inner layer encircles the lumen, circular muscle and the outer layer contains cells arranged parallel to the long axis of tract longitudinal. So the submucosa is a layer of dense regular connective tissue. It binds the mucosa to the muscular layer as numerous blood vessels and lymphatic vessels and it can contain exocrine glands and secrete buffers and enzymes in the digestive tract. So the muscular layer is dominated by smooth muscle cells and it has the inner circular layer and outer longitudinal layer it is involved in mechanical digestion and moving materials along the digestive tract. The, muscular, the muscle pattern varies along the digestive tract and the movements are coordinated by the enteric nervous system. The serosa is a serous membrane covering the muscular layer. It secretes a lubricating fluid to prevent friction for muscular movements. In areas where serosa is lacking, you have the advent adventitia, which is a dense network of collagen fibres, and this firmly attaches the digestive tract to the ad adjacent structures. So in summary for part one of the digestive system, the digestive system consists of the digestive tract, which runs from the mouth to the anus and necessary organs, such as gallbladder, pancreas and liver. The nervous system works with hormonal mechanisms to control our digestive processes. The digest digestive tract is composed of four layers, mucosa, submucosa, muscular layer and serosa. So tune in for the next video please if you're interested for part 2 of the digestive system. Thank you.